What is Gucci everyone? I hope you guys are having a great day, but I'm continuing with my series on how to make a ruby gem. Now, where we left off is getting everything started, and what I want to talk about next is GitHub, or Git. So, Git is our VCN, our version control system, and that's going to allow us to be able to post our changes and be able to revert back to past changes or share our changes with everyone very easily if we want to. So if you notice if I do an LA, if I list all my files, we see I have a .git and it's blue. That means there's a .git folder. That means when I created this gem, a git, a repository was initialized for me initially. And so very easily, if you don't know git, something you can do is I can do git add, I can do git add dot, and then I can do um, a git commit. And what that will do is it will save the code for me to go back later. But right now I'm not going to do that because I'm going to, before I do all this, I'm going to show you guys the version of Git I'm using, just so there's no discrepancies. I'm using the most, the most current version as of January 6th, 2.2.1. Uh, um, the difference between like 1.8.6 and 2.2, I can't even tell you what the differences are. I don't think there are any differences. I just know that recently there was a big security flaw found in Git, and so they, um, the most recent version gets rid of that security flaw, and the security flaw allowed you to basically hack um, GitHub repositories. So it was very important for me to update. Otherwise, I wouldn't have updated. But that's the GitHub version. I don't think you have any classifications. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use GitHub. You can also use Bitbucket. And what these two sites allow you to do is share your code with the public easily. And when you share your code with the public, other people can look at the code. And more importantly, the kind of god of open source, the awe of it, is that anyone can work on open source. So I'm on github.com right here. You can also go on Bitbucket, and the difference between Bitbucket and GitHub is GitHub is a lot more popular. There are some insane repositories on there. There's the Ruby source code. But then there's Bitbucket, and Bitbucket allows unlimited private repositories. GitHub only allows... I believe one, and then if you have an EDU account, it allows five initially. So you can't have a lot of private repositories, and private repositories can't be seen by anyone, but public repositories can be seen by everyone. So when you're beginning, it, that really shouldn't be a problem. All your repositories should be public, it shouldn't be, unless you're doing something big, like maybe, I don't know, like I have my own website on my, I have my own website public, but maybe if you want to make your own website public, um, private because you have a key or something. So anyway, you can follow these steps here to generate an SSH key, and what this SSH key will do is it will allow you, after you create your GitHub account, I'll post the link to this in the description, then you can easily clone things to your folders, to your repos, and then start working on them, and then push it back, um, contribute back to the big repository online instantly. So once I follow these instructions, I'm not going to do it right here. I then can go to any repository, see I'll click dot files here, and then I can go to SSH clone, and make sure it says H SSH, you can click HTTPS or SSH, click SSH always, it makes things easier, you can also do SSH ins installation, but the guide I just showed you guys shows how to do, you to do an SSH key, so they're just, they're different protocols of how to get information. So with the SSH key, we can then clone everything and start using GitHub. So... And so with that, we're going to do our first commit. So as long as you have Git, if you don't have Git, you can do, if you haven't, if you have Homebrew, you can do boo install Git. But we're going to do our first kind of command here. And I have aliases for everything. So we're going to do git add dot, which means add all the files. And then we're going to do git status to see what we added to the index. And I added all these new files. And then I'm going to do a git commit, um, am with a message. And we're going to give it first commit. And then I'm going to do a git push. Actually, no, I'm not going to be able to do a git push because I have not added a remote repository. But that's going to be my first commit. If I do a git um, log, I can see I have my first commit right there. So that says I'm doing my first commit. I'm not going to go over git. You guys should know what git is. But if you don't, um, just copy the commands I do. They'll help. We're not going to be going back, hopefully. So that is git. The next thing we're going to do is add gems to be able to test. Okay, everyone, I'm back, and now we're going to continue with trying to implement testing in our Ruby gem. The way we're going to do this is first we're going to add our dependencies. We're going to add our spec and guard and something called coveralls, which we'll use later to um, add testability and code coverage to our gem. So the way we do this is we're going to go into our gem spec. And as you can see here, I've already done this. 
what you want to do is in the last video I showed you guys, I accidentally deleted the end there, I showed you I had bundle and I had rake. And those automatically got um, added as development dependencies for um, for me. So within our gem, we have other dependencies we need. We're going to do RSpec right here. We're going to do guard. We're going to do guard RSpec. And this guard allows you to instantly run your tests once you update them. So you don't have to keep running them manually. It's very nice. And Coveralls is an online application that tests code coverage for you instantly. And our spec is going to be our testing framework. It's used a lot. A lot of people use Cucumber also, but I'll be doing our spec. And so what you want to do is you want to quit here and you want to do bundle install. You can also just type in bundle, but a lot of people need bundle, um, do that. So do, 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 once I do that, as you can see here now, all this stuff is getting installed. Like Thor did not have a bell. You may get an error like this, that is perfectly okay. I did not have a valid gem spec, and the reason because I did not have a valid gem spec was probably no reason. Guard was, everything was installed. It's probably because I did not be, oh yeah, it's because fix me or to do was not a description. So you'd have to get rid of the fix me or to do's to be able to fully push everything up. But with that, we have successfully installed our, bund our bundler and gems. And, and so now I want to revisit something that I was not able to revisit before. So um, I have a gem file and I have a gem spec. And so if you've done Rails, you know what it, you've, you've seen a gem file. So a gem file allows you to list the dependencies of your application. You use a gem file when you're developing an application because gem file sorts out the dependencies within your gems. So when you do a gem file, you're listing other libraries, which in Ruby is gems. You're listing all these other gems. And so what a gem file does is it resolves dependency conflicts. So for instance, maybe one gem needs RSpec version 1, and another gem needs RSpec version 2. Well, your gem file is going to resolve those clashes and keep track of which version you need for a specific gem, so you don't have to worry about that, because that can be a huge hassle. And your gem spec is what you need in your library. It's all you need in your library. So that's what I've always, that's what, that's why I'm putting it in the gem spec. And so if I do, if I look at the first gem spec, I have spec.add development dependency. So when I say add development dependency, this is something that's very important to understand. I am saying I need this in development. I need our spec in development because it's my testing software. That means that I don't need our spec in production. I don't need our spec when I deploy it. So the user, when I run bundle, or when the user uses my gem and runs bundle, I do not need to tell the to tell the user from my gem to install our spec. I just need it for development. You can do add underscore dependency to add, or add production dependency to add it. So you need that in production. So it will tell bundle to install that gem as well. So that's how you would do it. You would do spec dot add. Blah blah blah. So gem spec is for developing gems. Gem file is for your application, basically. That's all you need to know. But now I want to notice one other thing. I have a new file now. Let me see if I do I do it if I do a GS. Well it, it ignores it, but I have a new file called gemspec.lock. And let's do cat. Well, I guess we'll do vim gemfile.lock. And so what it does here is now it has kind of it it has my the first gem right there, but then it has all of these. It has guard. It has all the gem dependencies I just listed. And the reason for a gem file dot lock is it's locking. And what it says is it keeps track of all the versions this specific gem and the gems I've included are dependent on. So it's saying, okay, this is guard 2.11, and it's dependent on all of these versions specifically. So if I for instance, download another gem. For instance, guard RSpect has guard version 2.1. So guard RSpect is going to use guard version 2.1, not 2.11, which is what guard uses, which is a little bit confusing. But you can see now that the gem file through the gem file.lock is keeping track of all the different versions, even if a gem is being used multiple times, so that everything can work fluently. I just, I'm explaining the basics here because it's very important to understand this if you run this multiple times. As you can see here, the gem Thor, the most used gem on bundle, is used multiple times right there, being 0.18, and then right somewhere else, 
right here being 0.18.1. And all these arrows mean greater than or equal to, so take any version after, 0.9.12, and things like that. So the gem file allows you to keep track of your dependencies easily, and that's why we need it. So there you go. Now we have our dependencies enabled and can start testing. Okay guys, now we're going to do something very simple. Since we have RSpec installed, you should be able to do RSpec. As you can see here, when I type in a valid command on my terminal, it turns green, and when it's wrong, it turns red. So one thing we can do here is I can go to the top of my folder, I can go to first gen, I can do RSpec init. And what this will do is it will create a testing framework for me. So now if I go in my folder, I see if I new folder called spec. And so what spec does is it's going to create um, my testing folder for me. And now I can do guard init. And now I have a guard file. So let me see what I just did there. So now I have a new file called a guard file. And so now what I can do here, um, guard watches to see if our spec to, to see if I make any changes to my testing framework, and then it will instantly run them for me. I'm not going to do that right now, but I like to have it a lot. So now I have my guard file and a .rspec file, which R, that keeps track of the testing. My guard file watches for the testing. So that is pretty awesome. That's all I'm going to do for this video. It's probably already long as it is, but I hope you guys have a great day.